Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins and for today I am going to be your Akamai Developer Advocate and what we are going to be doing in this video is checking out something pretty cool. This right here is Memos. This is a privacy first, lightweight note taking system that you can self host on Akamai Connected Cloud. Now what makes this application pretty unique is it has a UI very similar to something you'd see on like Twitter, except for it's mostly just for yourself your resources, you can post links, images, text, it uses Markdown, you can post code snippets, just a lot of different stuff to organize your thoughts, your notes, just about everything, and again, a pretty unique layout. If we go down here to some of the key points, it is open source, which is awesome, it's self-hosting with Docker, which makes it really easy to go ahead and spin up. Again, Markdown support, you can easily share your notes if you'd like to, and you can link it up with some third-party services. So in this video, we're gonna spin up a Linode running Docker, install this and check it out. So starting off here, we are on Linode.com at the create page. What we're gonna to do to save ourselves a little bit of time is head over here to marketplace. From here, we could go ahead and search for Docker and just use this image right here. Now we can skip a lot of this stuff. I'm going to create my limited pseudo user, type in a pretty good, complicated, strong, and secure password. I do recommend using SSH public keys for this demo. We're gonna skip this. Now here is a good spot for the Linode API token. I'm not going to install this in this instance, but if you want to link this up with a domain name and install an SSL certificate, that is a good option. I have a separate video, which you might want to check out about now if you do want to have an actual domain name with this. So that will be linked in the card and down below. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this. We're gonna to go to images, select the latest version of Ubuntu. That's all preference. For region, we're gonna pick a area that is pretty close to me that is going to be Seattle, which actually, based on last time I was on here, there are some new additions, which is uh, very nice. Having a server a little close to you is always beneficial. Now, for the Linode plan, we can use the shared CPU, one gig, this is a very lightweight service. If you already have a Linode spun up with Docker, you could just install this on that. It's not gonna take up much system resources unless if you start uh, uploading a lot of things to it. Then you might want to look at attaching some block storage, but that's for another video. So scroll down, I'm not gonna create a tag. Let's get rid of that. This is going to be my memos instance. And just like your pseudo password, give yourself a pretty strong root password. From there, we're gonna scroll down. Backups are a good option at $2 a month. I'm gonna skip that for now and click on create Linode. So from there it's provisioning and once it says it's booting, we can uh, launch the Lish console. And there we go, it says it's booting. So if we click on launch Lish, it will open up a live instance of the uh, terminal so we can kind of see what is going on. We can see what it's doing and we can watch it install Docker, do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And when we are prompted to log in, we can then move over to a local terminal and run all the commands we're gonna need to. And here we're waiting for it to install. You can see a lot of the uh, system links and whatnot that it's doing with the uh, various Docker services. And there we go, the installation is complete. So what we can do is go ahead and close this out. Let's give our IP address right here a quick copy. And now from our terminal, we can simply SSH into it. So you're gonna do SSH, the limited pseudo username you created at the IP address you just copied, hit enter. Yes, this is our server. And now type in that password you set up in the uh, initial setup. And boom, there we go. There are some updates. So I'm gonna just run a pseudo apt update as well as a pseudo apt upgrade. And we'll do Y just so that can run. Type in our password. And there we go. So while it does this, let's go to that GitHub page and get that Docker command that we're gonna be needing. All right, so now we are back on the GitHub page for memos. What we're gonna do, we could pull it from right here, but just to show you, they do have some documentation. Here we have some options. We have uh, Docker, manage hosting, and then they have some other information for S3 storage, local storage, etc. We're gonna go over to Docker. Here they give us a rundown of a lot of extra information. We have Docker Compose here. This is gonna be pretty simple. So we're just gonna grab this docker run command right here. It's gonna put it in a dot memos folder in our home directory for the volume. And this is gonna be running on the port 5230. So let's give that a copy. And back over here, we were running an update. So we are going to hit okay and okay for this. I don't need the new kernel at this exact second. So I'm not gonna restart yet. I am first going to sudo and then run this docker command. So docker run detached init memos, the port, the volume, 
and the actual uh, the location of the pull and the tag is latest. So let's go ahead and hit enter. It's gonna pull that image and there we go. Again, it is an incredibly lightweight application. It is already up and running. So again, from this page, I'm gonna copy that IP address once again. I'm gonna open up a new tab here and paste in that IP address and we are gonna to go to the port 5230, just like that. And here we are in memos. Create our username, I'm gonna go something pretty simple. Let's just go with Brandon, give myself a pretty decent password. See here we're registering as the site host. You can change the language, follow system, you can make it light or dark. And I'm gonna click sign up. Now before I dive into some of the uh, options and features that we have, let's go to settings and see what we got going on here. Here's my username, we have our access tokens here. We can edit this user or change the password if we would like to through here. We have preferences. So again, some of the stuff that we saw on the login prompt, we have the uh, visibility currently set to private. You can make it public technically and a lot of signups and whatnot if you would like to. I'm actually gonna change this to light just so we can all see it a little bit better. We have some additional settings. From there, we have some admin settings. So here are your members. You can create members directly through here. Send somebody their information, have them change their password. Life is good under system. We have some information such as the server name, database size, some more visibility and user signup settings, max uploads, bunch of good stuff here. Then we have storage. It is stored in the database in that um, Docker volume that we went ahead and created with that initial run command. But you could obviously change this and use a uh, storage service if you'd like to as well. And it also supports single sign-on if that's something that you're interested in. So with that, let's run down some of the features. If we go to home, there is no data found, nothing going on. So if I wanted to post something, I could do like, um, my first thought, period, save that. That is my first thought. That is the very first thing I posted. Very simple, not much going on. And you can see over here, we have one memo on this day. So as you use this over time, this will fill out and you'll be able to see what's going on or how many activities are going on per day and be able to jump to those days very easily. For example, if I do click on this, it's just gonna set a filter for the specific day. Right here where we can go ahead and type, we can see some options. We have no tags found, so it supports tags, supports files, supports checkboxes or um, to-do lists, and code snippets. Let's work a little backwards here. So if I did a code snippet, and let's say this is going to be my example, docker engine x config, and then I'm to paste in the code that I want. So this is just a pretty simple uh, site config for nginx and I'm to save that you can see it posts just like a normal code snippet that you see in a lot of websites that use markdown or like forms and whatnot now of course I can edit so if I want to go ahead and edit this I would just click that and let's add a tag so this is going to be hashtag code and then if I'm to save that we can see we have hashtag code here and now under tags we have hashtag code click on that it just adds a filter for that specific tag and then as I add more, I can use that and then find all the little code snippets that I went ahead and saved for myself that way if I would like to. Now, additionally, we have a little checkbox here. If I do that, it's just going to do a little uh, markdown example of a specific item or of the actual checklist. Now I get control C. Now with this, if I type in, I want to uh, record a video today. And let's say I need to go to class. Uh, I need to finish my GIS homework and from there I could go ahead let's add some additional text today's to do and then I hit save and then we have a to-do list and now we have the check boxes so if I click on them I could check them off take them away do whatever I need to do now from there we have the file one now this one's pretty cool so we're gonna do upload method this is going to be a local file or you can use external link so for example if I do local file on my desktop, I have a few different things. I have HTTPS and Chasm. Let's say I want to upload this Chasm Markdown file as an actual file. I would just hit upload and then create. So then we can see it right there. And then I can say something like, this is a script for something. This is my uh, Chasm outline. And then I would save that. And then I have easy access to this. It's a new uh, tag as well. And then if I go into resources, you see I have that Chasm Markdown on this specific day. It also supports images. So for example, if I wanted to get a screenshot of something, open up the snipping tool, new. So I just want a screenshot of this right here. So I took a quick screenshot of this. Let's go ahead and save this. Just drop it on our desktop. This is the terminal. 
And now I could do, I have a, a screenshot of the terminal and let's add this to a, a screenshot tag and then click on file, choose the file, choose the terminal image, hit open, create. And then if I hit save, you can see, and unlike like the chasm markdown, since this is an image, it supports previews. So we have this image here. If I give it a click, it will expand it for a really nice preview. And we have the option to close it out here or download it if you would like to. Now, additionally, if I go over here, we have some options. So I can archive it, which will just put it over here. I can delete it, which will completely remove it. Edit it, pin it. So if I am to pin it, it is now pinned at the top. And if I go right here to mark, what this is going to allow me to do is create a new memo and reference this memo. So I could do a remember like a take more of these just to kind of remind myself, hit save. And you can see I put it here since this one is pinned. And if I go over here and click on the linked memo, it will take me to a full screen version of that. And then on all of these, you have the availability or the option to leave comments. So you can have a whole string of stuff within one memo to easily organize your thoughts and whatever you're really doing. Now within all of these, we have the option to copy link, share it and edit it, as well as changing how you want this to be able to display it, whether it's private, it's within the workspace or you want it publicly visible. If I'm to switch it to public and copy link, for example, then if I go over here, let's do a new private window and then paste this on and you can see it's going to be the IP address because I have yet to set up an actual domain name with this. Hit enter. You could see now this is publicly available and you can share links to things you want to share that way. And that is memos, just a very simple, easy service to spin up. It doesn't have a lot of features, but it has just enough where you can kind of work them and use this application exactly how you see fit. And again, it's easily hostable here on Acme Connected Cloud. With all that, if you're interested in trying this out for yourself, you can use the link down below to get a $100 60 day credit for new users. Definitely worth checking out. And anything I mentioned, of course, will be linked down below. Make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell. There are videos uploaded constantly on topics very similar to this, more advanced coding things and oh, a whole lot more. So with that, have a beautiful day and good bye.